Star Wars, The Heart of the Jedi, by Kenneth C. Flint. Chapter 30 Han, Leia, and Chewbacca moved through the still-opened portal and headed into the Jedi Labyrinth at a run. R2 rolled at his fastest speed to stay with them. 3PO brought up the rear, loping awkwardly along, seawater still draining from the crevices of his metal body. This is most difficult and most uncomfortable, he complained. I'll probably be rusting in a day. This time tomorrow I won't be able to move or speak. That'll be a relief, Han called back in a sardonic way. Just hurry up, Professor. The droid nearly crashed into the others when Leia paused as she came through the opening into a new corridor, and they pulled up with her. Which way now? Han asked. Just a minute, she said, concentrating. Then she pointed left. That way. Are you sure you're doing this right? Han asked, as they started again. Yes, she said definitely. Somehow, my own skill in the Force won't help me find the way, but I can feel Luke's presence. I just hope we catch up in time. Meanwhile, Luke and his escort had reached another barrier. A mammoth block of stones, fifty feet square, sat across an opening of the next corridor. And this, at, and this impediment, it appeared, was no mirage. Luke stood before it in full, quivering concentration, willing it to vanish with no avail. The stone remained quite substantial. He ceased his effort and walked to it, touching the hard surface, looking up at the looming mass. Beaten? Jedi? asked Tharkis. Is there no other way to go? No, said Luke. The heart lies just beyond this. I can feel it. And I have to go through here to reach it. Another test? I assume so, but I guess a different kind of one. This stone is real. Then it must be moved. Moved? Luke repeated thoughtfully. Not by us, said one of the twins, and certainly not by him. That thing must weigh hundreds of tons. It's impossible. Yet another memory returned vividly to Luke. He saw himself in the Dagobah jungles with Yoda. The Jedi Master was training him. He was standing and watching in amazement while the little being demonstrated that his will was enough to lift Luke's own X-Wing from the mire. Always, always with you, it cannot be done. Hmm. Always with you, it cannot be done, he commented to Luke, who had given up his own attempts. I don't believe it, the young man told him. That is why you fail, Yoda sternly replied. Luke came out of the reverie. Nothing's impossible with the Force, he resolutely said to the Imperials. Stand back. They obeyed, and he also stepped back from the stone. His face drew into hard lines, brow furrowing deeply as he focused himself. Slowly, the huge stone lifted. It rose several inches clear of the ground. Then it slid sideways away from the opening. It eased back to the ground. Luke relaxed. Unbelievable power! said the High Admiral in open awe. Unlimited power! <laughs> this was way before the prequels, though, so it's definitely not a reference to that. Just make sure he doesn't use it on us, said the shapeshifter called Caster. He doesn't dare, Tharkis arrogantly assured. Why, just because of his friends? Caster asked skeptically. No, put in Pollux. He believes that for him to use the Force in attack would be to step over to the dark side, and that would mean defeating himself. They passed through the final wall's opening into a central circle several hundred yards across. Around it sat a ring of twelve cylindrical, round-topped monoliths, each a hundred feet high and over twenty thick. At their middle, at the whole temple's exact core, sat a single, simple structure. Four large, flat, square slabs sat on their end supported an even bigger piece laid on top. The walls of this dolmen did not meet, leaving large gaps at the corners, though these gaps, uh, through these gaps a slowly and steadily pulsating red light could be seen. With greater caution now, the men moved closer. The Imperials, more timid, stopped at the structure's corners to peer through the openings, but Luke boldly stepped inside. A single large space of some twenty yards on a side was enclosed by the massive slabs. Ten feet in from the walls was another ring of a dozen stones. 
They were only a dozen feet tall and tapered to a blunt tip. Affixed to each tip was what looked like a white jewel. From each jewel, a thin line of brilliant light projected inward, joining with the rest in the center to form a glowing ring like a molten silver crown. And within this crown was suspended a spherical, blood-red stone. It had the clarity and translucence of a giant ruby formed into a polished ball. From deep within it, a soft but still strong light rhythmically throbbed brighter. The heart of the Jedi, Luke breathed. Beneath the floating stone was a round platform, high enough to bring a man to bring a man within arm's reach. Luke stepped towards it. We'd better go in too, High Admiral, one of the twins suggested. It seems safe enough. But as he started forward, Tharkis pulled him back. Wait, the High Admiral said. What's that? They drew back into the cover of the outer walls as a patch of haziness began to show bef below before the platform. Out of the haze formed, surrounded by a scintillating aura of light, came swiftly into view. It was that of a tall, handsome, white-robed man with peaceful, but worn and wistful air. Father, said Luke. Yes, my son, said the spirit of Anakin Skywalker. It is now my time to come to you. You have passed the tests meant for a true Jedi, and achieved the inmost chamber of the heart. You must tell me now, why do you seek it? To know, to understand, to be restored. That knowledge you must gain through your own mind, the Elder Skywalker replied. The understanding comes from your Jedi's heart, not this one. This one can restore you and give you a greater strength. But know that in doing so, it will change you, too. How? asked Luke. Once you have touched and tasted the pure essence, exposed in the wellspring of energy, a feeling of oneness with the Force will always be with you. It will be always in you. Your desire to devote your life to it will become your all. You will feel strongly the duty to assume the arduous task of a Jedi Master, and train others in the calling. This is an especially critical thing, as you are vital to reviving the Order, so there can be no mistake. That is why the final choice must be yours. Are you prepared, my son? But, Father, I'm not alone here, Luke began. I came... Anakin interrupted. I can stay no longer. What happens now must be for you to decide without me. Goodbye, Luke. His form began to fade. Don't leave, Luke called after him. The heart is in peril. But he was gone. High Admiral Tharkis strode grandly into the chamber behind him, flanked by the twins. The stormtroopers followed them in, spread out, spreading out to cover Luke. So, it's the power to become a master which lies in that rock, said the High Admiral, a greedy glint in his eyes as he gazed on it. The power to use the Force. Luke turned to him. Only for a true Jedi. Not any more, Darkus said. This time I will be the one to gain it. Luke looked at him with a sudden realization. You want it for yourself. Why not? The other admitted arrogantly. To be the greatest power. To eclipse even the Emperor. To order things as I see fit. Even if you could somehow control it, Luke argued. The Force wasn't intended to be used that way. You don't understand. It was meant only for good. If you try to, try to turn it for, to aggression and destruction, the dark side will overwhelm you, just as it did the Emperor and my own father. Don't speak that weakling's drivel to me, Darkus said harshly. I've heard all about its supposed shining qualities. It binds, it helps. It fills every rock and insect and flower. It's harmony and love garbage the only truth is in who wields the greatest power and if i can't turn your force to doing that i'll sweep this heart this temple this whole planet from existence i won't let you do that luke told him darkus laughed scornfully <laughs> you can't stop me the heart of the jedi is in my hands the last jedi knight is about to die any further hope of using their powers in the rebel cause will be extinguished. Mastery over the galaxy will belong to me alone. Yes, again, said a voice from behind him. 
He wheeled to see Han and his companions coming through an opening. Kill them! Darkus ordered the troopers. But Han, Leia, and Chewie fired first. As we all know, Han fired first. Their shots took out three stormtroopers and sent the rest scrambling for cover. As blaster fire erupted on all sides and began to burst against the stones of the room, Darkus ran for the shelter of one of the encircling monoliths. But as he moved, Luke's beckoning hand shot out towards him. The lightsaber was ripped free of his belt and flew back to slap in the Jedi's palm. Then Luke too was diving away from the blaster bolt, rolling into the cover of the central platform. His companions had by now found their own shelter behind the stones. Han and Leia and Han had one, Chewie another. The two droids huddled together behind a third. The laser fire crisscrossed the ring. Luke looked around the, at the combatants. He looked up towards the ruby stone hanging above. It had to be protected. Yet, the superior firepower of the Imperials was pinning his friends down. He made a decision and rose uh, to charge a stormtrooper's position. Fire from the two behind the stone was parried by rapid swings of the saber as he crossed the open space. He fell upon the armored men, and two quick cuts of the glowing blade struck them down. The twin shapeshifters behind another stone saw his move. You must stop this! said Castor. They could kill us all. The others will be easy, said Pollux. Skywalker is dangerous. I have a plan, said Castor. Chewbacca, meanwhile, was making his own bold move. Dodging bolts, he managed to work his way two stones further with, around the ring and engage a pair of troopers hiding behind the next. A bolt from his blaster took out one. Good work, Chewie! Han yelled at the Wookiee, while he and Leia exchanged fire with more Imperials opposite. A snapshot of hers hit one as he leaned too far out to aim. Neither of them noticed a serpent-like creature slither swiftly into the open ground from the stone next to theirs and come up behind them. It pulled itself into a tight coil, flat head lifting high, glistening eyes fixing on the pair. Luke attacked again, rushing on the next monolith to strike at a stormtrooper there. The man tried to use his blaster rifle to knock away the laser sword, only to have his weapon sliced in half. Luke's return swing took him down. Four stormtroopers were left, and Chewie, and Chewie improved the odds even more. He charged the remaining man at the next stone, firing rapidly. One bolt clipped the man from cover, and the next went into his chest. But then the Wookiee tried to fire on the pair at the stone beyond. No bolts shot forth. He shook the bowcaster hard and howled at his frustration. His gun's jammed, said Han. Seawater! The stormtrooper saw two. One signaled the other and they both attacked Chewbacca. Leia fired. The range was long, but her shot went home, downing one man as he rushed across the open space. Chewie dodged the fire of another, ducked around his stone, and brained the trooper with his useless weapon as the man moved around it. Good old Chewie, said Han to Leia. As much muscle as brains. Behind them, a glowing chrysalis rose to surround the coiled serpent. Its shadowy form within the glow swelled rapidly larger. Across the ring, Luke was preparing to charge the final trooper when he heard a voice calling him. Luke! He looked around to see a form approaching. It was that of Anakin Skywalker. Father? said Luke in astonishment. You're back! You must not do this, the figure said sternly as it strode closer. This is a Jedi temple, a sacred place. There can't be violence here. Lay down your sword. Luke lowered it part way. But, Father, he said, sounding momentarily confused. We have to defend ourselves and protect the heart. No arguments, my son, Anakin said firmly. You are a true Jedi. You must obey. Drop the sword. The lightsaber dropped further. Anakin eyed it approvingly. One hand moved to his robe. But then, he, but then, but then the remembered voice of Obi Wan sounded warningly in Luke's mind. Don't trust your senses. Luke shook off the confusion and focused hard on the advancing man. He saw there, superimposed on the on the form of Anakin, a swiftly shifting montage of ephemeral shapes that included an alliance pilot, a Jawa, a Tusken Raider, a leathery flying creature, and an Ewok. Luke also saw the blaster pistol hidden inside the figure's robe. Not this time, mate, he said and swung the saber out in flat, hard stroke. It slashed through the neck of Anakin, 
but as the head flew off and rolled away in a spray of sparkling purple blood, it transformed into that of the twin called Pollux. Likewise, the toppling body shrank back into the being's true, cadaverous form. While Luke was thus distracted, the last stormtrooper tried to make a break for an opening in the outer walls, but a shot from Han stopped him before he made it. That takes care of him, Han said with satisfaction. Not quite, a gruff voice behind said a gruff voice behind him. Both he and Leia looked around. The serpent form had now transformed into that of a reptilian beast, a deadly Rolk Magir, that squatted on massive haunches, huge clawed hands thrust out on sinewy forearms. Atop twelve feet of scaled and muscled body loomed an oval head with wide, tooth-lined jaws. It lunged at the startled pair. One hand shot out, knocking Han back to slam against the rock. Stunned, he slid to the ground. The beast's other hand swept the blaster from Leia's hands, and then it grabbed her and closing her torso in a fist. She cried out and pounded futilely at the entrapping claws. Her voice alerted Luke, who looked across to see them. He started across the circle at a run. Forgotten in the confusion, Tharkis peeped up from his own hiding place. He watched Luke go past the suspended heart and saw his chance to act. He rushed out behind the Jedi, heading for the central platform. The struggling Leia saw Luke coming, then spotted Tharkis behind. Ignoring her own jeopardy, she called out, Luke! The High Admiral! Midway between her and the heart, Luke stopped and looked around. Tharkis had just reached, reached the platform. Stop him! She bravely shouted as the beast lifted her towards its open, slavering jaws. Luke turned around towards Tharkis. He lifted the lightsaber, hesitated, then cast it. It went spinning across the ring, but not towards Tharkis. Instead, the weapon struck the huge creature, driving the full length of the glowing blade into its side. It howled in pain and began instantly to shrivel grotesquely, like a punctured balloon. Its dwindling hand released Leia as it collapsed onto one side, shrinking back into the scrawny, blue-white form of Castor. The lightsaber had impaled his bony chest from side to side, skewering the purple mass of his visible heart. Unarmed, Luke turned back towards the High Admiral. The man had mounted the pedestal. Now, Darkus said with a gloating grin, raising his hands towards the ruby orb. Now the power is finally mine! His fingertips touched the surface. The triumphant smile on his face froze there as his body was drawn instantly taut, held quivering, quivering, as if an enormous electrical current ran through it. His mouth dropped open. From it, his nostrils, his ears, and his staring eye sockets burst into bright shafts of ruby light. Then the head was engulfed in the flow of crimson glow that swiftly spread down over the whole body, consuming it as it would an intense fire. The light receded, drawing back into the red globe. A stick-like bundle of charred bones toppled from the platform, clattering to the ground. Luke walked slowly across the ring, approaching the heart and wasted form of what had been Tharkis. Leia helped a breathless but recovering Han up, and they joined him, along with Chewie and the droids. Together they gazed, upon, gazed down upon the ghastly remains. I told him he couldn't control it, said Luke, looking at the blackened, gape-jawed skull. No, but you can, Leia said with sudden intensity, looking to him. I feel it. You've proven you're a true Jedi. You've won the right. Have I? He said, looking up at the pulsating stone. Was I acting in defense to save you from Castor? Yes, yes you were. Was there hatred and revenge in me when I killed Pollux? He shook his head. I'm just not sure I know what a true Jedi should have done. He turned to her, speaking empathically. Emphatically. Do you see, Leia? I don't deserve this, at least not yet. I could touch the pure force here, but I won't. Our world, this mortal and material world, is still too much with me. Yoda was right. My motive for coming here was a selfish one. I've still got a lot to learn. Until I do, I know I'm not ready. I have a choice, and I choose to wait. He look she looked into his eyes a long moment, then put a hand on his arm. I understand, she assured him. Look, Han said anxiously, I don't want to break in on the moment, but if you really are through here, then we ought to get out. And fast. Come on. 